It is time to stop wasting paint. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my dig at the lake. I have these new goodies here to show you what I plan to use them for and a few other projects. So please stick around. It's not all about watercolor. The first sec segment is about watercolor, but in general, it's, it's about any kind of paint that you may be using. I got these three little chunky watercolor books. They were three for, I think, $15 on Amazon. I'll leave the link below. This is my the one I got for Christmas, Windsor and Newton Travel Field Set. Open it up. This is a water bottle. These are two little water dishes, and there's all kinds of mixing space. Mixing space. I mean, it's a fabulous little go on the go palette. And I use this when I paint in the kitchen rather than here in the studio. If I'm doing something late at night, just relaxing, I use this. So I keep this out in the kitchen and I grab this when I'm gonna go somewhere or my watercolor lap book. And I'm gonna throw a picture in here of what this looked like a little while ago after I had done some projects. You can see that there's paint all over the place and I used the water bottle in the middle to mix paint as well. Sometimes I, I lift it out and I use that as a mixing area. But I just, I just left it in and used that as a mixing area, although the paint did kind of roll down into there anyway. I'll use whatever is, is close and easy and handy. What I wanted to do with these three little books is use them as books of unwasted watercolor paint. Now, I, if you've seen one or two of my videos, I show this a lot. I got this idea from Cat Hand a million years ago. It's a composition book, just a regular composition book of unwasted paint. All these are pages that I could still add to, and I've shown this a lot. I'm just gonna flip through real quick to show you. Every time I do a painting project and I have paint left over, I put it in here. And I try to do different, different color combinations, different brush strokes. This has metallics in it different I use different brushes for different projects and so whatever I have that's being used I wipe it off in here so I love this I also have a steno book which is a little bit smaller same idea again I've shown that before I and I'm going to do full flip throughs of them when they're full and they're almost full and that's fantastic but I most of that that's in there not all but most of it is craft paint and I wanted something for specifically watercolor. So I got, like I said, these chunky little watercolor. They lay flat. They're nice, hardy paper, pretty decent paper. Great size, especially for this little palette. And the whole idea is when there is stuff left on the palette, and I, I have always said, don't clean off your palette, your watercolor palette. It drives me bananas when I see people at the end of a session spray all their spray their palette and then wipe everything off. You might as well just throw money in the trash. This is it's all good paint, especially watercolor. It always reconstitutes. If you have gouache, same thing. If it's not acrylic gouache, if it's just water soluble, water based, not acrylic gouache, it will reconstitute as well. Not as well, I understand, but pretty good. And to wipe all that away is just a waste. And so I got the three pack and I thought, well, one, I want to do gray, just palette gray. Because if you mix all the colors on your palette together, you're going to get a wonderful gray. It's going to be different all the time, depending on what colors you used. It might be a greenish gray, might be a purpley gray, could be a reddish gray, whatever you are using. So this one is going to just be for gray studies, gray scale studies. This one is going to be just for monochromatic studies, one color. All tints, shades, and tones of one color per page. So one page might be just all blues, and the next page might be all browns or greens. But each painting, either one one page or a two page spread will be just one 
color. I haven't done anything in here yet because I just got these books. And they feel so fun. They feel like board books for adults. And then this one is going to be the clean off the palette. They're all clean off the palette books. But if I have a lot, a lot of blue going on, well, then I'm going to do a blue study. Or if I have a lot of purple and or orange going on, I'm going to do a monochromatic in this one. This one is anything goes. Whatever color I have going on on the palette, I'll think of something to use it here. For example, I'll show you again the picture of what this palette looked like this morning when I started. You can see up the top, there's some purple and orange up top. There's quite a bit of green on the water bottle in the middle. There's a lot of gray here and there. So what I did, uh, the first one that I did was this skyscape. Now it's not done yet because it had to dry. And my, my trees kind of dried back really foggy. And I want to I wanna make them darker, more dramatic so that you get more push and pull. Things that are darker tend to be closer. Things that are foggier are in the distance. But I had purple and orange on there and that reminded me of a sunset. And I had a lot of gray, so kind of a stormy skyscape. I love skyscapes because you can use any color. Any color goes in a skyscape. Greens, blues, pinks, yellows, oranges, peaches, lilacs. I mean, any color goes when you have storm season. We get some crazy green gray skies here or yellow gray skies when it's tornado season. So literally any color goes. So this might end up mostly skyscapes because I love doing them and you can't go wrong. Now, is this done? As I said, no, I want to put some darker darks here to make those not so foggy. The sky is pretty well done. I don't think I'll do too much more to the sky. I'll probably put some more details in the water to indicate that it is water but it's a really good start now I can finish it with ink just go in with my micron or my new I like these way better than the micron fine liners I like the Stadler, Stedler brand Stedler I used to say it's Stadler all the time but I looked it up and it's Stedler so this is the Stedler version of the micron pens I like these way better because they're smoother. They're like butter. They're awesome. So I can go through and finish this in pen or next time I'll paint, if I have some of similar colors, I can put those in darker. I can just go into my palette and, and do what I wanna do to finish it. Right now that feels like cheating. I want to see what I can do with just the leftover paint. And I'm telling you what, when I was doing the things I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. I was looking in every crack and crevice. Stuff had gathered down in here. Pigment had gathered down in here and in here. And there were some, there was some juicy paint in here that I went after. And here, I went after here. I mean, I was digging paint. Specifically not to dip in. This was off limits for my clean off the palette. Now, I, th I see this as just playtime. I'm not trying to do a commission. I'm not trying to do a painting for myself or the living room or to show off here. I'm just playing with my watercolors. Another patch that I had was some orange and green, and that really reminded me of a fall leaf. So I dug up as much of those colors as I could and I put it down. Now I, I you can see I'm I'm out of paint essentially. I got I got nothing left. And when although you can see like this looks like a lot of color, by the time you add water enough to get that paint to move, there's barely any color left. And I'll show you what I did with it as as it started to dissipate and get more and more water to less and less pigment. So again, I could take my fine liner to this and finish it off. I could take a gold pen. That would be really cool. I would do some shading underneath the leaf. And I don't know why I didn't bring that green all the way across. I have no idea why I did that. But that's, that's the start of this. So again, this one's going to be 
all colored. It, whatever colors I have, I can use. And then this one is going to be all grayscale. And so the first thing I did was this two-page, sort of a rainscape. Uh, you see that this is kind of a greenish gray because I had a lot of this bluish green down in here and a lot of gray. This dark piece right here is a chunk of Payne's gray that I had put there a long time ago. And it's pure pigment, so I don't count that. I count it as a little bit of this. That's why that piece is still there. But you see that it's not just straight up gray. It's a greenish gray. And again, it's not finished. I would like to go back and accentuate these trees, either with ink work or darker paint work. But it was fun to lay that in and get that going right off the bat. This one here on camera looks like a giant mushroom or a, an A-bomb cloud. <laughs> it's supposed to look like rain. And it sort of does. This one especially looks like rain. I love that. And this one is raining. And these are kind of raining. I love this. I just love it. And it was leftover paint. The other thing that I really like to do are these grayscale studies like the big one I started a little one I have one of these little minis this one is not sewn it's glued and stapled so it's not going to hold up forever but I love these gray scale studies and all you need is a decent watercolor brush that comes to a nice point when it's wet and there's a million of these videos on YouTube on how to do people in two minutes so that you can put people in your watercolor. Now this one to me, she looked like she had a hat, like a an old, an old hat, and this looked like a, a bustle to me. When she was coming out, she just looked like a, a Victorian lady with a bustle. And she's got her back to us, and she's, I don't know what she's doing. This little guy... First, it was I wanted it to be someone kneeling, like in a garden, but then it looked more like they were sitting on a dock, so I gave him a fishing pole. And this guy's just, just walking along. Looks like he's got a hoodie, because he's got a bit of a bigger head than he should. He's all bundled up for winter. He has moon boots on, right? Just quick little studies. Now, this can go a long, long, long way to help you drawing, to help you get the perspective and proportion of doing people and normally I don't do people I don't like to put people in my stuff I do like to do dogs so I did similar play with dogs and I'll show you that in just a minute but I got this paint this little composition book because I want it to be just like the big one I did some grapes because I had some reddish purples Again, I'll finish it with ink work and some Posca pen to put some highlights on those grapes. I might throw in a background. I might add more grapes as I get more of that color. Or just clean off the brush. This is all, that's all this is, is just cleaning off the brush so that I could do the purple or that I could do a different color. Then I did this. This is when I, this is the last thing that I did as I was just cleaning off, getting as much out of the dirty palette as I could and I did a pattern here and with the same colors did a different kind of pattern here obviously this is just little circles that I colored in and this is just pouncing my brush with different colors on it and when I wanted to switch colors well then I went to another page and wiped off the brush and I did these little dog studies same kind of thing He's kind of like a curly-coated dachshund. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He's kind of funny. He's got really big ears, and boy, is he wide. But a nice little tail. He ended up with a bow tie. I'm not sure how that happened. He's Maybe he's part St. Bernard. I don't know. But his little nose kind of showed up a little bit in his little mouth. This is just notebook paper, just for fun. I was going to try something else and when I got his head out he looked like a little Scotty or a little Westy to me so then I continued on that way here's a few more that I did again he looks like a Westy a little Westy even though they're all white it's fine and gray and the wind must be blowing something fierce because look at his tail I don't know what kind of dog he is he's a he's a rescue maybe a Basset with those big long ears Maybe some kind of lab. 
another kind of lab. All of this with unwasted paint. This is all, I'll show you this book. One of my goals this year is to learn to draw dogs. And I'll show you that. That's what this book is all about. Draw, my learning how to draw dogs better. And this kind of stuff really helps. It helps you understand their form and their proportion. How big is their head? And of course, all dogs are different. And I'd rather do two-minute dog studies than two-minute people studies. But look at all the stuff that I did. I did all these dogs and all these dogs and these few people. And I got some great pages for my... Here's another one. Just cleaning off the brush. Great pages for my composition book of unwasted paint. There's another one that I did. Just designs. And what will I do with that? Doodle over them. Using for, use them for collage. Use them for doodle. Use them for backgrounds. There's all kinds of things you can do with them once you get them do, painted up. Did some grapes. And then the rainy skyscape. And, the, and these. All with the tiny little bit of paint that was left on this palette. So next time you're going to go clean off your palette, get your papers out. Get out some scrap papers. Get yourself another watercolor notebook just for palette play. Just for unwasted watercolor play. Because doing this kind of stuff loosens you up, number one. Because there's no the stakes are so low. You can't screw this up. You're cleaning up paint. If if this doesn't, like, I'm not thrilled with this leaf, so I'll throw in a background, or I'll paint over it later, or I can keep adding to it until I am happy with it. This and the camera looks more like, like that's the land and the water is coming right over, like the beach, and there's a little island off, just off a little peninsula or something. There's a lot I can do with that. There's a lot I can do with this, too. Or I could just leave it and love it the way it is. But all of that. So next time, I also made this little, this teeny little, I did this a long time ago. It's just with scrap watercolor paper that I had cut down for whatever reason. I put Fabri-Tac glue. I put them together and put Fabri-Tac glue there and then a piece of paper over it to, to bind it. So it will lay flat when I work on it. And it's just unwasted paint. Just un... Well, that's ink. I didn't paint that at all. Another thing, I didn't do it with this this time around. But before I did all the stuff that I just showed you, I got out my little round journal that I started a long time back. And I cleaned off the palette first. That's why these colors are so muted, because I used a lot of the bright colors here. And all I did was throw in some backgrounds. This had marker on it, this really bright marker on it, and I didn't like it. And it's a little bit water soluble, so when I added the water, it kind of blended in. I like this way better than what it was. Same here. Isn't that fun? And I happened to have a little tiny bit of silver paint on this palette because I was doing something with it. And I used it all up on here. But that look at that. It's, it's like a planet. I just think that's so fun with unwasted paint. Again, this had marker underneath it. So that, that's what's affecting it. I used some of the gray. That to me says a moon. This one was already done. I forgot one. I was trying to get them all painted. I liked the blueberry from the last round journal so much that I'm going to do another one. And this one had marker on it too. It's not done. It has a couple more layers to go. This one I was going to do something with so I glued a magazine page on. And I want to replicate this outside of the border. This was unwasted paint, as was this. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't know what they're going to be yet. I don't care. This one had a gray back, a gray border to it, and I was thinking of a little rosebud in here. But my gray disappeared. Now I'm not sure what it's going to be. That was already dirty. I didn't do anything on that side. 
This one looks to me like a marble. I did that. This is what those other ones look like. So apparently I, I missed a lot. Or I ran out of paint. Those dark colors wouldn't cover. That covered these. I ran out of that much paint to do this. So I didn't. That's probably why I didn't do it. I did this one. And this one. This was already done, but I did the green on this one. So more unwasted paint in my, what's going to be another round journal. Since we're talking about unwasted paint, I have one more thing to show you. And I had mentioned if you're into oil painting, uh, I see, you know, when you do an oil painting, there's just a truckload of paint left on that palette get a huge piece of canvas and clean off the palette. There's so many things you could do with that extra paint. You just have no idea where it could lead. And I hate to see paint go wasted. So I was making some, painting some yard art the other day with uh, Dollar Tree uh, uh, acrylic paint, premium acrylic paint and enamel glass paint maybe that's what happened it's gloss acrylic paint okay so it's, they're both acrylic i painted some things and we got we got an entire month's worth of rain in a day and a half holy flood holy the things that i painted with this got all shriveled up and just wiped right off i'm so pissed so i'm gonna have to redo it but that was that was just a couple days ago this i did days and days ago i have I use that gray plate, this, when I use acrylic paint, I put it on here and use this as a palette. Well, there was quite a bit of, if I have a picture, I will show it here. I think I do. You see, there was tons of water and colored water. So I grabbed a whole bunch of paper and, I, and dictionary pages, and I used that craft paint to dye some paper, some pages for projects. Some were already torn, it doesn't matter. Some I put brush strokes on, some I wadded up and let, that's how I got that. It looks like mommy gummy because it kind of is, it's not real soft. I only wadded it up once just to get the crinkles so that the paint would dry in there like that. And then I had, I was using just a crappy craft brush and I dipped that in what was left on that palette and water and I just did real quick swipes like that on, this is just an envelope. I got a 40 count box of envelopes from Walmart for I think $2, maybe $3, because I love to do my fun sprays on them. I was doing this and then I was painting daisies on a, on a shepherd's hook. That's what I was doing for the garden art. And so I just came in here and painted daisies too with the leftover paint. Now, I liked this so much that I I did these. These are not leftover paint. I did these very much on purpose. But I just love how they all came out when you fold them down. So the back has just that nice little strip. And that's what the front looks like. That's Happy Mail, isn't it? That's Happy Mail worthy. And they were so easy. I mean, not one of them is correct or accurate. Sometimes my, my dots are perfectly round and sometimes they're egg-shaped. Sometimes my petals went out and sometimes they went in. That's on the same flower. Out, 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 in. <laughs> you know, it's not rocket science. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I just think they are so cute. I wanted one of every color. And so that's what I did. Kind of looks like wood sort of a wood grain or just a pretty background like this one I think was my one of my last ones and I was getting tired they're not even close to symmetrical or the same super pointy not anywhere close to the same I don't even know what the kind of flower that's supposed to be I threw in an extra one that didn't look right but it's all right it's it's just for fun right it's okay it can be imperfect 
And the reason I'm pointing out all these things to you is to because when we look at these videos, we go, oh, that's so cool. I want to try it. And when we're two days later, a week later, when we remember these, we're going to think, oh, the hers were perfect. They are not. They're not even close. They ran into each other. They trail off. They overlap. They're not perfect at all. They're not perfect. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with leftover paint from your projects but and we've talked about this a lot craft paint we haven't talked much about unwasted watercolor please stop wiping off your palette at the end of every paint session it's just a waste of paint you can learn so much figure out what it is you want to draw you want to draw dogs do that you want to draw people do that you want to practice drawing hands do that with your brush and grayscale. Just these little grayscale drawings. They're magical. And you might be start like maybe I was starting out, oh, I think I'll do a husky. Oh, he kind of looks like a, a Scotty. Nah, let's make him a Westie. You know, it can be anything. And what I love about these things is your mind fills in a whole bunch of stuff. Like that looks like it took a long, long time. And it's really too different colors one the light gray i kind of let dry while i did this guy and then i went back and I, I gave him a couple little extra dark spots less than three four minutes but it looks like i spent a lot of time his ear kind of faded out so i'd have to go back and give him another ear or you know maybe that's just his spots i just love them because they can they just come to life on their own and maybe you don't know what you're going to start. Like those grapes. I thought, I, I, to be honest, I was thinking wisteria. But then it wasn't the right color. And then I thought, oh, well, lilacs, they have a reddish. But then they were upside down. I thought, all right, grapes. Right? Right? So it started as wisteria. And then I thought, no, I'll do lilacs. And then now they ended up grapes. So let it morph. Let it be what it's going to be. Just have fun. All these things will help you with the water to paint ratio, will help you with perspective, proportion, and, and size, will help you save money. I mean, there's all kinds of good reasons to do this. If you like this video, please, please, please take another look at the one that YouTube is going to suggest that's best for you, because we have over 300 videos in our library that you can peruse. I have a lot of new subscribers. Welcome to all of you. Very nice to have you. As I said, the library has 300 videos, and I'm sure there's something else you might like. So take a gander, and go love up your Beastlies. That's what they're here for. Mate get the lake, out for now.